Between school, your friends, and social media, answers are everywhere. But where can you find the truth? Welcome to the Well Student Cast. We're asking for a friend so you don't have to. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Well Student Cast. My name is Bryn, and you might notice Ka is not here, but we do have Jordan and Cooper with us. So, what's up, guys? Dude, Ka is currently trying out or auditioning for Moana Two. <laughs> And I think we all are rooting for the guy, but he's not in studio today. It's a live action one. Yeah, this time? he's well. I, I, it was between him and The Rock, obviously. So he couldn't be here today. But I'm your sort of second best <laughs> substitute. Uh, who are you? My name is Cooper Selzler. I'm an extra. Hey, <laughs> I am not Ao. You are extra. Yes. Do people still is... say that? Uh, kind of. I think so. That's uh, out. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Cooper, what do you do? Who are you? What's up? I am a senior at Fresno Christian High School. A um, little bit about me. I love dogs <laughs> and sugar. Right. So Dang. if you give me the gift of a dog with a Reese's bar, <laughs> I will love you for life. And Cooper just let everyone know the way to his heart. I would say Perfect. dog-shaped Reese's bar <laughs> would be better. Less to take care of. That's fair. <laughs> I've like seriously debated getting a dog recently and... I'm not going to. Everyone keeps telling me not to. But what? I okay. So I feel fun. like you should. I have a question. Oh, God. It's more of an icebreaker just okay. to get us rolling. Yeah, what's up? So speaking of dogs, would you rather punch a puppy oh my gosh. in the head as hard as you can, but nobody knows about it, or everyone thinks you punch puppies, but you never <laughs> did? <laughs> I gotta be honest. I'm punching the puppy. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna punch the puppy. I feel like we need to like, like <laughs> lose, edit lose in. We need to edit in like the cricket sound <laughs> in yeah. that moment. Oh, I just I saw don't know. Bren's brain melt a little bit. Yeah. No, you can't say I don't know. Oh my. I That's the point of this. Can it be like a poodle? Because like I feel no. Yeah, what like, kind of dog we talking? That's where your love for dogs stops. Yeah, it's like poodles and chihuahuas. Like yeah. they're like not really dogs. Oh, One of like, like the hairless dogs. Hairless what? dogs? Oh, is that a cat? Yeah. Uh, I would punch a cat. The Siamese cats? Mm. Oh, you'd punch a cat? <laughs> yeah, I hate cats. See, this is what this question's getting to. <laughs> the needy greedy. The needy greedy. <laughs> Cooper told us earlier that Nacho <laughs> Libre is his favorite movie, so that's a quote from that. Yeah. Top three, mm -hmm. and it's not two or three. Yeah, well, what are we talking about today? <laughs> Nice. Well, uh, we are gearing up uh, for like final season with a lot of students and things like that. And so we were kind of talking earlier uh, just about sometimes the like stress that comes with that season. And overall, uh, this idea that a lot of us live in this fear of failing. Um, and so I don't know. I just wanted to ask you guys, have you ever experienced that? Or like, I mean, even maybe before we start, like, how do we define fear of failure? Fear of failure. Mm -hmm. I mean, so failure is different for everybody. Because we all have different standards of what success is. Mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes it's more of like a, it's a misplaced identity, mm -hmm. I would say. You have like a fear of failing, which means that your idea of success is placed in something or some performance or some person or something. Mm -hmm. And then you're letting that thing sort of define your worth. So your identity, your worth is in that thing. And you're really afraid that you're not going to match up to either their expectations or your own expectations for yourself or that this thing is not going to be who you are anymore. Yeah, hmm. that's a good definition. What do you guys think about that? I would say fear of failure is, when I think about it, I think of failure is not bringing glory to God and success is bringing glory to God. Um, and so that, that, that's how I would define it. And so, like, failing is just me, like, not intentionally like, bringing glory to God. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, I think, Cooper, what you're talking about, that's, like, the ideal, right, of, like, that our lives are being lived with the priority of bringing glory to the Lord. And that, yeah, falling short of that is what we determine as failure. I think Ultimately, when, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think when I've experienced this fear of failure, and this is something I struggle with a lot, I think— um, I'm actually fearing failing what other people's expectations that they probably don't actually have of me are. Um, yeah, or, fear of failure and fear of man are like cousins, yeah. right? They're like <laughs> yeah. kind of overlap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think the way I experience it the most, I would say, is like um, I will kind of be like a chameleon and try to be whatever the person in front of me thinks that I should be. Mm. Um, 
and like we'll do that at like total um I don't know like harm not harm to myself but like just live in such uneasiness because I'm unsure of how to please them like you'll lose who you are Mm -hmm. in a desire to make sure that they're like expectations are met yeah yeah Mm. and then I'm operating out of instead of it being like oh I do this thing some of the things can be good things but instead of doing this thing to bring glory to God it's out of I'm afraid of failing Mm -hmm. what either the world or people's expectations might be instead of out of an overflow of like just Mm. love for the Lord Mm. um but do you guys feel like is this something you guys have ever wrestled with or that you guys like feel in your day-to-day lives Nobody wrestles no. with this, right? No. Yeah, actually, <laughs> just you. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks. Sorry, Brian. I'm the only one. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, uh, for me, yes, 100%. I have and still do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. Just like the insecurity of me, like feeling like I'm failing to be enough mm. for somebody else, whether it's like um, me to my parents or a student to teacher, or player to coach, or just like, mm-hmm. especially for me, like, me to someone that I respect, Mm -hmm. like those relationships, like I find myself like fearing the failure. Like I'm not going to be enough for these people. Yeah. That's hard. So Cooper, you described it as like bringing glory to God and then failure would be to not do that. Right. So what does that look like when you don't do that for you? How does that play out in real time? Of failing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, what does it look like? Um, like, let's use a specific, pretty easy sports, right? Yeah. Like, when you're, you play volleyball, right? I do play volleyball. So, what does that look like on the volleyball court? Yeah, I mean, when I'm having a bad practice day or a bad game, um, I feel like I'm failing when, first of all, when I view success as bringing myself glory. Because mm-hmm. um, when I fail, it's so easy to, like, get, like beat myself up for that um, because it was for me. Um, and so when I fail, like on the volleyball court, um, it's just an insecurity. Um, and I beat myself up and I say like, no, like I, I should be enough so that I can be on the, on this sports team. I should be enough so that my, my coaches will um, be proud of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's just an insecurity thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it creates like a spiral of pressure, right? Which yeah. almost does not allow you to even perform in a good way at some point, It limits you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, a lot, you know, being a pastor, a lot of what I do is like, you know, behind closed doors with either like um, counseling people or working with our team and students or, you know, it's not like public, Mm -hmm. but then a very public part of my job is speaking. And so I get the, you know, huge (laughs) privilege, privilege of sharing the word with other people. And I think, you know, when I first started preaching, fear of failure was like everything. It was, I I would share stories from my life that had nothing to do with the text I was actually preaching mm-hmm. on because I knew they were funny and that people would like me mm-hmm. because of that. And then what I realized was I was actually you know, gaining people's goodwill and people were liking me, Mm -hmm. but they weren't really understanding anything about who God was. And I was actually like not doing my job. Mm -hmm. And so over time, I would say like, you know, you stand up in front of a group of people and you want to do a good job. There is a motivation in that, right? Like I want to do a good job. Mm -hmm. But I think what's underneath that, if it's in a healthy place, it's because I want people to understand God's word. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's in a unhealthy place, it's because I want people to think I'm good at preaching or mm-hmm. I want people to like have a positive experience with me or th- or com- even comparing myself, right? Because a lot of times fear of failure is like I'm looking at this person over here, right, who maybe has been doing this for a lot longer than me or even is more talented than I am or is, a, you know, name the way that they're in my mind better than me and I'm comparing myself to that person yeah. and saying like, well, I don't live up to them. Mm-hmm. So I'm not doing what God wants me to do or something like that, right? But when in reality, the best me is just who God has created me to be. Yeah. And that's like, you know, I fail when I can constantly compare myself to others and that. And then when I also let other people's approval of me dictate how God views me. Mm-hmm. So, 
Well, you brought up this idea of comparison. And I think, at least in my own experience, comparison can kind of drive fear failure a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think something that's been super encouraging to kind of think about in my own walk is like a lot of times we're comparing our like lowest moments to other people's highlight reels. And so we're Mm -hmm. like, wow, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. And that like continues the spiral of like, I'm afraid of that. I need to keep working to try to compete with this other person's thing. Um, But how do we kind of like operate out of what you're talking about? Like how God created you um, in your giftings and your things and to honor him ultimately. But how does that kind of help us combat this fear of failure? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the first is like the the most empowering thing we have uh, as Christians is the story of the gospel Mm -hmm. in that, you know, God came to earth. He lived a perfect life perfect, you know, 100% man, 100% God, died on the cross to save us from our sins, resurrected to overcome the power of death, and then empowered us as his church to move that gospel throughout the world and tell other people about him. Now, what does that mean, though? Mm -hmm. Is that you have inherent worth, that God looks at you and says, you're worth dying for. You are my child. When you are in Christ, you are a new creation. You are his kid, worth more than anything in the world, Mm -hmm. worth God dying over. And so... What the gospel does is say, like, when you fail, you um, you may be disappointed. Like, you're, it's going to be dumb to think, like, you won't be disappointed, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. we all get disappointed. Yeah, uh, that's because you want to do well, and that's a good thing, right? That's probably built into you by the Lord as well. But when that gets out of whack, instead of disappointment, you're crushed. Mm-hmm. Uh, when your priorities aren't in your identity in God and who he says you are, right, if you're a volleyball player or a student or this thing or that thing, then you're saying like, well, who I am is that, Mm -hmm. not who I am is Christ's, and I do that, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so like the gospel enables you to say, look, look, I might be disappointed, but my life isn't over because this thing doesn't determine my worth. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes you better at whatever you're doing because like we said, that spiral's not there, right? Mm -hmm. When you have that proper identity, when you view yourself as God does, then you're able to actually say, well, look, you know, maybe that play I did bad. Maybe that test I did bad. Maybe I didn't study for the right thing or whatever, right? But actually, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to move on to the next thing, right? Yeah. And it allows you to actually let go of failure because we're all going to have failure at some point, Yeah. right? For sure. Cooper, what would you say are like some like tangible things that you have done that you've seen like um, help you in this kind of like fear of failure, combat that and take those things to the Lord? Yeah, um, I would say in terms of, like, helping me, um, it's just changing my view on, like, what failure is mm-hmm. and what success is. Like, if if I see success and failure as both opportunities to bring glory mm-hmm. to God, um, that even when culture says that, like, you may fail, like, you're still bringing glory to God in your, your failure. So, like, mm-hmm. you're not really failing. Um, and so I'd say changing your view on what failure is um, has been the best thing that has helped me because I see that even in my failures, like I'm still bringing glory to God. So I'm actually succeeding. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. and like, especially in our failures, I feel like where like God can be brought the most glory, Mm -hmm. um, or just it's yeah. People, people who don't fail don't need a savior, right? Exactly. Even your failures can point to God. Yeah. Well, and like the verse that says in Christ or in our weakness, Christ's power is made perfect. Like Mm -hmm. I think, For me, something I've had to come to terms with is the fact that when I'm like constantly craving perfection or like living in such fear of failure, I'm almost just saying like, well, I don't want to need God. Like I don't, (laughs) I'm self-sufficient and that's where like a lot of sin is born out of. And so um, kind of like recognizing our need for a savior is what like our failures point to that. So Mm -hmm. that's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like that comparison thing is so important. You have to, uh, my kid, he's four years old. He watches a show called Bluey (laughs) and there's this, it's always like heart wrenching. They, it's such a good show, (laughs) but, um, they have this episode called run your own race, Mm -hmm. which is all about like, you have to understand like that person's running a race and you're running a race, but you guys, neither of you are like winning compared to each other. Yeah. And I think that's what God would have us do too, is like, you have different giftings than I do. Mm -hmm. You have different giftings than I do. None of us are better than one another. Mm -hmm. We actually are all in a body of Christ, building each other up, building the church up, and being used in our giftings, right? Yeah. But when we start comparing, I mean, that's just a losing game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think even with the comparison stuff, trying to move from um, 
like comparison to celebrating. So like I can celebrate the ways that like Cooper, you're gifted the way Mm. Jordan, you're gifted uh, without that meaning that I'm like putting myself down. And then I, like I can also have my community celebrate the ways that I'm gifted and the ways that I'm winning uh, without that meaning that they're failing too. Mm -hmm. And so like, how do we as a body celebrate each other um, instead of it being like this competition, like the run your own race yeah. stuff that you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, and I think FCA camps, football camps growing up, they would just be like, they always had this audience of one thing, which mm-hmm. I thought was so corny. But then mm-hmm. like, you know, you kind of think about it and you're like, well, that's true, right? Mm-hmm. Like if if my heart and my goal is simply to reprioritize success around my connection with God, my desire to bring him glory, that's going to change the way you do everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've definitely seen on like playing in tournaments and stuff. Um, like when I'm in the mindset of like, I'm just going to play for God's glory. And if he has like um, a college coach, look at me at some certain time, like awesome. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's what he is allowing to to happen. Mm-hmm. But if not, like I'm still playing for his glory. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm not going to fail. Well, yeah. I think the last part that we need to address is like, sometimes we do get in those sort of spirals, right? Mm-hmm. where you get in this fear state and it really take over your mind, you yeah. know, like, um, Bryn, like how, how do you, when you get in that place, how do you lift yourself out and how do you depend on God? How do you keep, start leaning on God if you weren't before? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I think honestly a huge thing for me, uh, which is funny, Jordan's actually helped me a lot with this, but like speaking out kind of what the fears are, like actually saying them out loud and naming them. Mm. Um, cause I think, for me, it's really easy for me to get to a place of like spiral in that sense um, without even like recognizing it. And then I'm already like way down the rabbit trail and I'm like, whoa, okay, how did I get here? Mm-hmm. Um, and so saying those things out loud. Um, and then I feel like once I name them, then I can like combat them with the Lord too, where I'm like, okay, here's what I'm afraid of. I Once I say it, I'm like, well, I know that's not true. Like, like you match the lies with truth. Yeah. 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 And, and truth so, has to come from scripture. Yeah. From God's word. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For sure. And so um, I feel like that's been really helpful for me. Um, but yeah. That's great. Been yeah. What about you? Too. Like when you feel like you're in these places, you and I talked about a situation recently the other day where you felt like, you know, that was a heavy, thick feeling. Yeah. Um, like, you know, how do you sort of, stop leaning on Cooper and start leaning on the Lord mm-hmm. after those things. Yeah. I'd say it's kind of like what Bryn said, just like kind of acknowledging the lies that you are hearing um, and kind of like replacing it with truth of scripture mm-hmm. and like um, who God is, his character and like who I am in light of that, mm-hmm. like that, that truth like speaks louder than like all mm-hmm. the, the lies that you might be like telling um, yourself. So, yeah. 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 Well, and I think even looking at like the amount of time, um, like I think it, uh, breaking it down by like how much time is what we kind of like are showing what we prioritize. And so for me, I'll be like, okay, I spend a lot of time thinking about how much I could fail at certain things or like how much I need to perform. Uh, and so in those seasons when it's like, especially like something big's coming up and I feel like I'm like really noticing that that spiral's coming um, to be like, okay, I even more so need to like, I'm going to have a way longer quiet time in the morning or like mm. I'm going to unplug very intentionally for like a day um, or things like that, because again, what we're like spending our time on and yeah. what we're giving our mind to is what will be like most present in it. And so I think knowing yourself too, in that sense, I think most of the time in these situations, I would say like sit on the stool that God has given us. And mm-hmm. it's a three legged stool of God's word, which you talked about truth, right? Mm-hmm. God's spirit. You just talked about prayer. Like it's huge for you to hand these things over. I mean, if mm-hmm. you're just sit most of the time when I'm in fear of failure, like stuck in these spirals, it's kind of like a, a just a bad play that keeps you right. I'm imagining things that aren't happening. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, it's all caught inside of me, right? And for me to actually hand those things off to the Lord, feel like put it at the foot of the cross and be like, please do something with this, mm-hmm. God. I don't know what to do. And then the last is God's people, the last of the yeah. three. And to to have people who you can say, Hey, this is what's going on inside of me right now. Can you help me process this? Is so huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess, I mean, this has all been so great. One thing kind of like wrapping us up, if you guys were to say someone's listening, again, we're kind of like in the thick of final season, all that kind of stuff. Uh, end of the semester is right nearby. Um, what would you guys say is like an encouragement you would have to someone listening that might be struggling with living out of this fear of failure? Mm-hmm. Um, first is just um, do your best. Mm-hmm. I think don't look next to you. Do your best. Put in the work. Do what you can, but do your best. And mm-hmm. if your best is whatever comes out on the other end, 
don't be obsessed with the result. Just be thankful that God put you through that process and that you were faithful in the process. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, um, I would say just focus on the truth that you are enough. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel like that that truth just really kills all insecurities. Um, and that, like, when we talk about, like, fear of failure and, like, what is failure, what is success, like, um, and, like, the idea of, like, the failing to be enough, like, what is being enough? Mm. Um, I see that. Um, not as like an amount, but as like a surrender to God. Like um, I was thinking about this last night um, and a passage that came to mind was um, Mark 12, 41 through 43, where it's the um, widow who um, all these Pharisees and the high class of the community are bringing like um, riches and um, giving portions of what they have. Um, but this widow comes up and uh, um, she gives, I think it says like two, two cents, mm-hmm. um, but that's all that she has. And so I'd say being enough, like God just asks us to like give all that we are in surrender. And again, like it's not like an amount. Um, me and Jordan were talking about this um, yesterday about like how, would you say like God isn't like, he's like, he's not like. Uh, not waiting for you to mess up. Yeah. And he's not like, mm-hmm. I wonder if Cooper's going to praise me perfectly today. Mm-hmm. Um, just like you are enough as you just fully surrender to God mm-hmm. saying like, God, use my success, use yeah. my failures, um, for your glory. And I feel like the, the truth of that you're enough just flows out of that. Yeah. And I think I would add to sort of the glory talk about like, I think what you're talking about too, is we, Coop and I talked about how like we can't add more glory to God. Mm. Mm. Like he just, like if we could, that wouldn't be much of a God, right? Yeah. We can't take it away. Yeah. But us glorifying God is for our benefit. Mm-hmm. And so he doesn't stand over you being like, you better glorify me. <laughs> I need this. He's, he sits there being like, you glorifying me is what you're made to do. Yeah. And I know this is good for you. This is what I want for my kid. And so please do that because it's going to sh- just produce life in you. And so like I-, I say that just to be like, hey, people, maybe if you're thinking about like on a God's really mad at you <laughs> for not glorifying him. That's not the case here. Yeah. He's pleased with you. You are enough. Yeah. And uh, that, and just that an glory. Just an invitation yeah. to like walk with him. You're not going to yeah. imbalance the scales of God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Um, well, I think one encouragement I have, um, especially with like the final season stuff, um, I think so often we will like, we'll take breaks in studying and things to like scroll on TikTok or like uh, go watch a show or things like that. And I think if you're feeling this like really strong weight, uh, my encouragement would be like, make time to unplug and go like rest in scripture in prayer and things like that. Um, and I feel like a lot of times we'll say we don't have time for that stuff during the season of like, I have to study and things. Um, but prioritize that. Um, cause I think that will make your soul feel way more at ease than scrolling on TikTok. But, um, yeah, that's all I have. Do you guys have any last thoughts? I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I hope we didn't fail at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was so scared not. that I was going to Oh my gosh. You guys did great. We're so grateful for you guys. Cooper, you're awesome. Thank Thanks you for having for me on. I'm so honored to be in the presence of the greats. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. Brand's a Hall of Famer. Oh my gosh. Well, this is awesome. Uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> yes, do that. Like and subscribe. Comment Share with your friends. Shout out to our patrons. <laughs> yeah, try and guess us. Cooper's last name. Yeah, how to spell it. You definitely spell can't spell it. it. Yeah. How, how do you pronounce your last name? McElhine. I know. There's no A between the M and the C. There's no M. It's Irish. That's so cool. (laughs) We'll do a whole podcast episode. (laughs) All right. We have gone on long enough. This is good. All right. Love you guys. Uh, Love you guys. Mean it. Bye. Bye. See you next time. (laughs) Dedication to KO. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Well Student Cast. As always, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about us. For more information about the Well Student Ministries, visit thewellcommunities.org slash students. 